Hey folks, this is Sayin Chen. I'm here today in the city of Cali, Colombia. I have with me my guest, Catalina. She is 24 years old. She's a social media content creator and also a failed call center worker. Thank you so much for coming, Catalina. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me. How do you speak English at the level that you do? Well, I lived in Miami for four years since I was 15 until I was like 19 years old. So I lived there, I went to high school, I studied English and I came back to Colombia recently before the pandemic. Okay. Do you have any hopes to go back to live in Miami or are you happy here where you are? Well, I'm here because I came back from Spain and I usually don't like like the culture stuff here and some parts that like a third world country has but I used to love to live in another country not only United States but also Europe or maybe even in the Caribbean though where I can work in earn good and have a good life here I have a good life thanks to God I have good income and the English helps me a lot to earn good money but I have a lot of issues with the Colombian male culture mostly because I like to be pretty but I don't like to be subjected to being looking attractive it's certain stuff I don't like that prejudice but other than that I will I love Colombia I love the nature I love the animals I love like food I love it but other than that there's a lot of stuff that would change like political and cultural since you've lived in Miami before, have you noticed a great difference in the quality of life that people live in Miami compared to the quality of life they live here? Well, yes, I do see a lot of difference because in Miami you have like the metropolis and it's all city life, tourism, they have a lot of traffic from people of other countries. In here, you don't see that much. Usually, you don't see it now because there has been a, a lot of tourism coming from like the parties and the people here that they know English mostly. So that's been a change. But here, there is a lot of poverty because the government doesn't help the people, and the people are thinking that they deserve to be poor. Some people. But they have to change that mindset to just like grow economically and have a good life because it's, you can have a good life. It's just like a, you have a little, you have to put a little more effort here than in other countries that is easily. You have a main salary in the United States and you can live so good, have a car, have a house with just working in like a big company like McDonald's, just working in a normal job. Here you don't. If you have, if we work like that, you have to have three jobs so that you can just have a good life, and you don't even care. Can have a car, just pay rent, and all that. It's really difficult. I don't know how a person can have a family and have a main salary like a lo the minimum wage and sustain all the people. I have no idea how they do that, but yeah, I see a difference of life in Miami and here. Hopefully that change maybe with a good government or the people changing consciousness, but hopefully. <laughs> I try to make a difference on that, but I'm just starting little by little. What exactly are you doing? Well, I, I love to read, so I love to inform myself on how to change my mind can change my lifestyle. So now right now I'm changing my lifestyle to better because I'm doing gym and I'm starting to read more things that I have left because of, you know, stress and work life. I quit my job because it was taking too much of my time. It was taking like 10 hours for every day. Monday to Saturday, so I was like, I have no time to go to the gym, I have no time to really do the stuff I want, to travel, because I have to go and sit in an office and work every day. So I didn't like that. So that's why I do content, because me, the content can give me the um, a schedule I love. Like, I can do two hours of content and that's enough for the day or for even the week if I do a lot of videos and TikToks and, you know, lives they give me enough to just sustain myself, give me a good life, go travel, 
and not have to work. That's why. How much were you earning working full time Monday through Saturday in well, a call center? In the best call center here in Cali, I used to make $800 monthly. So $400 every two weeks. That's nothing. That's like what you do in the United States, working like mm, half a week, three days. You do that 400. So it's crazy. And now is your main source of income TikTok lives? Yes, well, lives give me a lot when the traffic is like 100 to 1,000 people that see me. They give me gifts in TikTok and they give me money. So TikTok pays me, but every like two weeks. So I have to wait for that. I mostly do like translations and that gives me like, for a translation of like, depends on how many pages. If it's like five pages or less, I charge like 25 to $50, which is nothing, but usually take more than one translation. I can make three or maybe five a day if I have full time. If not once a day, it's enough. So it's like enough for the week or even for the day. So that's mostly. In TikTok, I make the most I made for life, I will say it's like $200, the mostly I made. So it's not much, but for Colombian exchange, it's a lot. Where is your audience primarily from? I would say United States. And some Europeans, but mostly Spain, Italy, or even Switzerland. They speak English, so they usually contact me and we can have all the talk and understanding for business. What attracts them to you, do you think? Mm, I will say I have an energy that may be attract people to have to talk to me or, you know, to want to know me. So even for business, they have seen me and told me that I'm really efficient. So when they know me, they want to do more business with me, usually. So that's what attracts them. And obviously that I'm cute, but that's just the people see. Then they know me and they like me better. So that's what I want. Basically, you just talk to them on TikTok and then they tip you as a result. Yes, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and then they talk to me from like chat DMs and I, I decide who to reply. If they give me the trust to like reply and be serious, then I keep going. But if they are not serious, if they want to just talk to me and be my friends for no reason, I don't, I'm not looking for friends, I'm looking for business. So, yes, that's only my platforms on social media. Does this seem odd to you at all that your job is to talk to people on the internet? Well, I think that's like the new era business. So, mostly if you're not networking on social media and doing that, you don't make money on social media. You're just like a viewer. So why be a, a viewer when you can earn money from social media? So when you interact with your audience, what are you talking to them about? What are they asking you? Is there a pattern or is it all just kind of random? But sometimes it's really random because there's people that just talk to me and want to give me gifts. And I'm like, for nothing, just for existing, that's nice. I love it. But sometimes they want like career work, like a translation or a video chat. And I'm like, what is what that you want? If I like what you want, I will do it. But if I'm not comfortable, I won't do it. So it depends on that. If they send me pictures I don't want, then I block them. Stuff like that. If I don't like the person that what is telling me in that moment, I would just block them and say, please don't contact me again. <laughs> And if I do like the person, then I just start talking to them. And then sometimes I make good friends out of that. I don't need people like that, but I like to have like conversations over, I don't know, philosophy and life. And you know, I like to know other stuff that can help me grow. But I don't like people that just wants to have an empty relationship with me. Do you think most of these dudes are lonely? 
Well, I think that's part of the pandemic. Like people just like to go inside their house and don't go out. And they stop like relations with people like used to, they used to like go to a party or go to a reunion or a mall and know people like that. Like they say, hello, and you know, that used to be before. But now people want to just have a video chat with a girl, an online relationship, and they're okay with that. So I think that's, that has changed the way that people communicate with each other. And that's what I think about that. Do you think that's more of an American thing? Or is it common in Colombia too? Mm, I will say more an American thing because in America you have like lots of people that live alone in their houses and they don't have even friends or relations with family. And here you have a lot of family, um, even family like behavior from like, strangers. You can find a, a taxi driver and they can be like, oh, God bless you, how is your mom? My friends did that, my son is this, and they, they just like wanna cherish their life with you. So that gives you like, oh, this person is like my family. You feel like that. But in America, you don't have that with people because people wanna keep a distance with you. Mostly because if they, like harass you, they can have a legal problem for that. So I think that's part of why people want to keep lonely and keep private their lives in America and not that in Colombia. I believe it's because people are more, want to touch you, they want to grab you, they want to hug you for no reason, just women and men, they just have that here. And in America, they are scared to like hug a random person because that can give you legal problems and you can go to jail <laughs> or be sued for that. So I think that's because of that. But that changes depends on how much trust you want to give to people. But it's a very American thing that people want to keep lonely and have like online. Mostly if you hear from girls that hear that they work as webcamers, they tell you that the only public they have, it's from America or from parts of the world where they don't have these close relationships with people and family. So would you agree that it's kind of hard to be lonely here in Cali? Uh, I would say here people love to socialize. <laughs> so. It's hard to be lonely if you want, but if you don't want to go out and you just want to be in like your job or your house or your own private life, you can do it. But you will find that if you go out to the streets, you will have somebody that want to talk to you or say hi, or, or if they see that you're a tourist, they want to say, they want to know where you're from, think like that. So if you want to come here for tourism and don't have a social, interaction with anybody you can do it but if you want to come here you mostly want to socialize with other people because they are really good people here is that because the locals are just curious about foreigners or the Colombians receive the same treatment mm. I would say that it's about looks if you are Colombian and you look like elegant or you know like uh, attractive person or maybe a person that you want to know about their where they work or you know what I mean if you want to know about the person you will socialize with them but if you see like a person from the streets do you know that they are not have a good life and they want to tell you hi, hi how are you and all that you will just try to keep distance because you know if they're gonna rob you <laughs> or what they want from you but if you see an american or maybe an european or maybe an asian person you're curious because why are they here because colombians usually don't see that tourism in cali i mean Maybe in Medellin or Cartagena or Bogota, they have a lot of tourism, but here in Cali it's weird. So people are curious if they see somebody that's not local. So if a guy comes to Cali 
and he speaks no Spanish at all. Is that going to be a problem? Mm, I will say it's a problem if you don't find a translation. If you have a translator, mostly people here come and have a translator for them to go out and just not have a problem of communication. But if a person like a Colombian person or a Caleña, Caleño it speaks English, there is no problem because most people here they work in call centers or jobs that need English and they that's why they know English here. But it's a problem if you don't speak any Spanish at all. Or maybe if you don't have a way to have your phone for translation, that's going to be a problem. Because if you go to a local place, usually there are people that don't speak English. But the young generations, now they do speak English more than before. Are you more concerned about your security and safety now that you're back here full time? Yes, I'm concerned about my security, even though I haven't been robbed and uh, like a firearm. Things that happen a lot here, there, there's a lot of insecurity. And there's a lot of people that just will um, shoot at you for like your phone. So it's really sketchy, so it scares me a little bit going out alone, being on a, a, a lone girl on the streets. I uh, will find a lot of trouble because people will try to harass me and there is no way to punish those people for just telling you stuff in the streets so it's like is this people that's gonna follow me to my home I don't know so I just want to have somebody all the time with me even if it's a girlfriend or a male friend that I know I'm be secure in the streets Otherwise, I would not like to go outside alone. I think that I will do in Miami or other countries, I will do it where I don't have the necessity of feeling unsafe in the streets by myself. But here I find a problem because I believe uh, the male here, they are not used to see um, a girl with some like tight pants, in the streets and not feel like oh this girl is a piece of meat so it's a thing that you don't see other parts where you travel so that's my concern but other than that I love to walk in safe places like mm, where you go and they tell you it's, it's okay to go with your phone and there's nothing gonna happen because there is police and there is security around. That's the only place that I like to like go and be secure by myself. Other than that, I will not go everywhere. And I suggest not to go everywhere by yourself also. <laughs> so the robbery that you just described for your phone, they're looking just for your stuff not to kill you, right? Yes. If you just give them everything, they will not do you anything. But if you say like, no, I don't want to give you my phone or my wallet, stop. They mostly just do it because they want to get your stuff, even if you don't want to. But again, that's not something that has happened to me, but has happened to a lot of people I know. Mostly every people I know. So I will say they just look for your stuff because they just want your money or have their way to have their money with your stuff, but not because they want to do damage to you. If you just give them everything, they will leave you alone. Might they just shoot you if you start screaming? They usually don't do that because people here, because they're used to see robbery a lot, they hate robbers. So if you're in a public place and they're gonna rob you and you scream for help, the people can get the robbers and they can, they can even not shoot them, but they stab them and they hit them. The people like from the streets, they hate robbers. So if they see somebody being robbed, the robber is gonna have a really, really bad end. And after that, the police comes and they don't do anything to the people that beat them because he's a robber. So he just gets to jail, beaten and all. So they have a really bad destiny if they try to shoot you for robbery, you know, in the streets. If you get robbed, it's only because you're alone in the streets and there's nobody to get help. No, nowhere. Other than that, 
it's okay if you scream for help. <laughs> Given the safety concerns, would you still recommend people come here to visit or to live? Yes, you can come, but I suggest if you come as a tourist, you will learn to learn a little bit Spanish. So that way the people don't see you as a tourist, that it's like helpless and they see you as a local tourist, as to say. So that way they feel like they have, um, they treat you more as like a local if you know English Spanish. If you don't know Spanish at all, they will treat you as a person that they can take advantage from. I will say that, yes. You mentioned earlier about how you look and your appearance and how that influences how you're treated. Oh, yes. Is that more true here than in Miami, for example? I really think that everywhere because if you give a good look even if you're not attractive but you just give a good look to people they will treat you a little better than if you just don't give them a good look what does that mean can you describe what you have in mind when you have this good look in mind when I say good look I mean like a person that looks clean that looks like it takes care of themselves and they care about their appearance. Let's say if I have my makeup, for example, I want to like to have my mascara just going everywhere and you know what I mean? And if you're a male, you won't look good if like your shirt is broken or stained that people will treat you like that like they will see that you don't take care of yourself so they will have that much respect for you as the way you treat it in my case i think because i look good i try to have a good appearance i get treated better by maybe male that want to have a and a close to, a closeness to me and also girls girls also treat me better here because if it's a cute girl they see me cute and they just wanna have my friendship you know they have this a lot so it's like oh thank you <laughs> you're nice too but in Miami you used to see more people that love to take care of themselves and surgeries and the fitness so you must to use that kind of people everywhere so it's like you treat them normal because you see them everywhere here it's because you don't see that a lot even though Colombian girls are really pretty here there are some pretty girls that they don't take care of themselves and you see them like that and you know how to treat them you're like oh you don't take care of yourself so you don't deserve this much respect because if you feel value you show that to people and people value you more i believe what place has more pretty girls miami or cali <laughs> and that depends what you like because in miami you have a lot of latinas but not all the Latinas look the same. You have some Latinas that look blonde and white and some other that look black or Indian and they're amazing. But if you don't like this kind of this kind, you will like more um, Colombians or more Latinas from like Brazil. They look different. You know, like Argentinians, Brazilian girls they look so much different too, like Colombians and Venezuelans, you know. So if you like more this kind, you will love to be more here than in Miami. But if you look for this kind of girls that are more like, um, you know, like surgeries done and certain features, you will like Miami more. Are you saying that Miami has more women with plastic surgery than here in Cali, Colombia? I would say yes, because in Miami you have more way to get a surgery, even if you do them there or come to Colombia to do it. But in Cali you see a lot of women with surgeries if they, ha if they have the money to get surgery. 
otherwise you cannot get surgery and most people here don't have enough to get a surgery that costs a lot of money but if you like surgery you want to get surgery anyhow um, personally I've seen only girls with surgery here in Cali if you are in a place with people of high income for that reason and the culture is because before used to be like a narco traffic culture and they used to have the girls and the modeling here that you need to look with surgeries to have a job of modeling or to look good for men. What about overall obesity levels? Oh, that's more in the United States. But because of the change foods, the fast food change, and the hormonal that they, the hormones that they put to the food, not only fast food, but also vegetables, fruits, and grains that are everywhere in all the food. Here, you don't see that much obesity, but you see it a lot. If you are with people that have the way to eat the fast food instead of organic food. But obesity is a huge problem in America because everywhere you see it's kids that are five years old and they are obese, they are obese and you're like what are their parents thinking about? Why they let them be like that? They don't know that in 10, 20 years they may be dead of cholesterol? Well, I think like that because I love to eat good food. By good food I mean organic food like agricultural, like uh, agricultural, indigenous food, food from the, the <laughs> fruit from the soil, just organic, no hormones, just from the earth. How has being in America changed you? Well, living in America has changed the way I see life because when you only used to see um, in certain patterns of life, you think that there is nothing more. So maybe you feel comfortable with the life life gave you and you don't want to grow sometimes. But in America, you have the mentality of always, if you have a project, you can do it and achieve it and maybe be millionaire because of an idea. And that gives you the security to try the idea, to see if it works or not. And if you fail, you don't really, you don't really fail and not get anything from that. You always get every, you get a learning from every fail. So I think that's a thing that it teach you in America more than here in Colombia. Even if you um, study in a university, uh, high school here in Colombia, you will learn to be an employee and just to like follow rules and keep the head down and keep with the system. In America, you do that, but if you don't, if you don't read books, you will think like that. But thanks to God, America gave me family that they, they, they taught me how to read and to grow myself and that gave me a different mentality, a mentality of just explore the world and that gave me security to travel by myself and go to and go and race myself to see if I get something good from that or not and if I had lived here maybe I won't have that. So what are your hopes for the future, for yourself, personally? Well, right now, I live by myself. I just started dating with somebody, so I'm happy because of that. Maybe I will have a family, because right now I'm 24, so soon I'll be 30. Um, maybe I want to have a family by the 30s. And obviously a business by myself and help people with that business as well because I like humanitarian help and I love to also help the environment as well. So if I have the opportunity of like maybe a study, a career that will help the environment and the people, I will do it and I hope to have big impact on the world doing that in the future. 
How many children would you like? <laughs> Before I used to not like children at all. I thought I would never have a family. But right now, I have changed that mentality, I would say one or two. <laughs> but hopefully, if I don't have children in the future, I will choose to adopt. I don't have any problem with that. I think people have a lot of problem with blood lines. But myself, if I have one children, it's okay. If I have none, it's okay. But if I have three, I will start to work. <laughs> because that's too much, <laughs> too many. Is he a foreigner or is he a local man? He looks like a foreigner. <laughs> But he's from, he's Colombian, he's not a foreign, but he's not from Cali, he's from Bogota. <laughs> and I never thought I was like somebody from there, because they have an accent. And I don't really like that accent. But somehow I ended up with this person that lives from there. <laughs> so I think it's okay. But he looks like, um, he's been told that he looks a lot like an Spain. A Spanish person from Spain or even Arabic, like white Arabic kind of person. What are the general differences you've observed between the men here and in the U.S., for example? Well, in the U.S., I find that males are more respectful, like they have more... How they, they treat girls as if they were your girlfriends as mm, I, I think I, I think to explain myself like this I feel like a, a male in the United States can be my girlfriend you know I don't feel like a ras for them because they treat me as another person more than a person they want to sleep with and here, male uh, are just thinking on who to sleep with next. And I think that it's okay, but if you let the person know your intentions before. And here, they usually treat women for having a in double intention with them. And if they have what they want, they just leave you like that. And they tell you that they love you and they want a relationship with you just to sleep with you. And I think that's bad because you shouldn't do that. Even if you're a woman or a male, you should not tell people that you like them just to have one night with them and then just be like, oh, I don't know you anymore. That doesn't happen to me, <laughs> but I have done that a lot. <laughs> and I think that's okay. After the years, I think it's not okay if you tell a person that like, you like them and then you don't like them anymore and you think it's okay to just pass to the next person. <laughs> but that's a male thing here. In America, uh, I used to have a lot of male friends, even if they were, they were having a double intention with me, they always respected me. And I like that because I will feel secure to have like uh, going out with them and feel like they're not gonna me or they're not just gonna do something with me or give me something in the drink and then I don't know what I'm gonna end up next that's something that happens here a lot and women do that a lot too with male they put stuff in their drinks and they just rob them and even have them kill the next day you see that here a lot I think that, that doesn't happen in America that much so what you just referred to is Local Colombian women doing that to local Colombian men, too. Yes, they do that with anybody that they see they can take advantage from. Like, if you see, um, if you're that kind of woman, let's say, and you see a person that is spending a lot of money and is by himself or herself even, you try to talk to them to, if they want to buy you a drink, usually don't accept drinks but you give them the person the drink and then they get stole. They get robbed and they end up in a hotel and somewhere where they don't know where they are or what they did yesterday. And that's the way that they do that to other people. Not only male, they also do that to women if they see they can take advantage from them. What can men do to avoid this if they're hoping to meet some local Calenas? Well, the only way you can avoid this 
it's to buy your own drinks and to not have them close near somebody near so they cannot put anything on your drink they cannot tell the bartender to put anything on your drink and that way you can meet local people and not have anything happening to you because you if you always have your own drinks your own stuff and you don't share with anybody that's a stranger to you and you don't bring them to your home also then they have no way to rob you or do anything to you because you're not giving them the trust to do that if you go to somebody that you don't know and you want to meet them meet them in a public place or in a place you can find somebody to help you in case that you feel bad or you feel like you're in a situation that you're not safe there by the person that you're meeting I will suggest also if you feel like you're feeling dizzy or you just accepted a drink from a stranger and you're feeling bad go to the bathroom and throw up that's the only way to just not have that that danger on you <laughs> yeah I've been told that a lot because if I go to a party and I receive a drink from somebody I will have somebody test it first and then I will drink it if I don't see anything happening to the person <laughs> I will drink it if I see something happening to the person I will go to the, with the person to the bathroom and make them throw up have that has that ever ex happened to you one time but the person drink it so I didn't drink it and I was taking care of my girlfriend in case that she was having something and she started feeling dizzy and I told her let's go to the bathroom we went to the bathroom she throw up and then she started feeling better drinking water and then I didn't drink it obviously after that we left the place because we were having a danger there is it a big enough problem that you would recommend that foreign men not even come here and try no you can come here and try I even find out a husband, I mean a wife and a good woman here but for that you have to get to know the person you cannot just expect to meet one person one day and just have a relationship out of that that usually doesn't happen it happens if you after that you get to know the person more then you know if that person is gonna be your next relationship or it's just gonna be a uh, person you want to know for a couple of days or weeks and just have them as a friend you know and it's not bad for tourists if you come here and you meet a woman that maybe speaks English or know how to use a translator and there's a way to communicate and you get to know each other better then you can have a friendship or relationship with that person as a stranger but if you're just thinking the, to go like a public place meet one person for one day you can have the risk of something happening to you because you don't know the person you probably don't know the real name of the person and if something happened to you you cannot complain with nobody because you don't know the person well if you know the person if you know their family if you know even their id <laughs> their id number or the id name you with that way you can protect yourself and if something happens to you you can go to the police or to somebody that maybe know this person and have them have justice if something happened to you but if not there's no way you can protect yourself so it's risky but if you take your precautions you can have a good relationship a good friendship with a stranger and even have the person of your life <laughs> but you have to know the person does going slow decrease the risk yeah i think so because if you go slow you know if the person has good intentions with you or is just looking for something else so going slow is the best i think even though i don't do it because i'm really risky and i'm impulsive and i love to new meet meet new people but i will suggest going slow if saves you of a lot of uncomfortable situations so it's better I suggest that yes <laughs> and for the last question of the night 
What other negative aspects about this city or the country should foreigners be aware of that we haven't talked about already? Mm, I think foreigners need to be aware of the insecurity in the streets. So usually if you go to a taxi cab or even public transport, you have to be really aware of your phone, of your personal stuff that always have with you, otherwise something can grab it and you don't know. And then you lost your passport or your phone and it's really difficult after that to do something about. But um, other than that, I would say to be aware also of the prices because sometimes if you don't know the price of that thing, even a bottle of water, they can charge you a lot if they, if they know you have dollars in you. For example, they tell you a bottle of water is $10 when in reality it costs less than a dollar. So you have to be aware of the prices on the food or the local places that want to take advantage of foreigners because of their way of income. And don't trust the police. The police don't want your safety. In other countries, they may care. Here, they don't. So be aware. And if they find something, even if you're in a car, in a rental car, and you're drunk, they can go to jail with you and they can find a lot of things to sue you for and give you terror and don't believe them. They are not good. Police is not good, <laughs> but people are. So if you want to find help for some reason, go to the people more than the police. <laughs> I will really, really have that as my personal uh, counsel. <laughs> okay. So to finish, is there any other s advice, suggestion, recommendation, or anything else you would like to say to my audience? Um, I would suggest to visit Colombia because Colombia is beautiful. The people are beautiful and there is a lot of things to do here if you love nature and adventures. And I will suggest you to do that more than to go to the tourist places that they told you to that is more for you to consume than to enjoy. Uh, like the mountains here are beautiful, the beaches here are beautiful, there is a lot of things to do if you like to skydive or go and explore. And I suggest to do that more than other stuff if you come visit to Colombia. Enjoy more as a natural space than a place to have the same parties that you have in your own country for the, to say it but that's a personal belief because I love more nature than going to places where there's a lot of people like concerts and all that but people love to do that and I would suggest to treat the food here the, the food is amazing the local food and to help the indigenous people that have a lot of problems here for the political system that they have. So if you see an indigenous people in the street asking for money, don't see them bad and help them because they have no help from the government. And these are people that you need to help more than a person that maybe have the way to have a good life and be locals and not have them because they're on uh, substances in the street. So I will suggest to help those people if you don't f you find them everywhere in the streets with their kids. What's going on with them? And they've been desplazados. Displaced. They, displaced from their own homes in the mountains by the military. Not the military from the government, but the military that's illegal here, like the terrorist groups, they displace them and they end up in the streets here because the only way to find a job is going to the city nearby and go to the streets and ask for 
money with their artisan with the manual crafting they ask them they ask the other people for money and it's not because they are having uh, bad choices in life but because they've been unjust treated by the government and the terrorist groups that are helped by the government thank you so much catalina you've been a wonderful guest uh, i learned a lot <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me i'm sure the guys will too bye bye, <laughs> bye. For those of you who have never traveled to Colombia before because of safety concerns, the entire Colombia safety course is now available on Subscribestar. Check it out in the link in the description below. If any of you folks need some help with planning your life or with organizing a trip, email Say and Chan at ProtonMail.com to inquire about a session with Say and Chan Life Coaching and Consulting. Everyone else, if you would like to support me and my work, please consider doing so on Subscribestar, Cash App, PayPal, YouTube memberships, or Super Thanks, all links in the description below. Everyone else, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. This is Saiyan Chan signing off, reminding us all to always cogitate and analyze.